grateful to have you kicking off a new week with us. My name is Carl Azus. This is CNN 10. As of Sunday, there were more than 14 million people in the U.S. state of Texas who still didn't have reliable running water. Authorities were able to get electricity running again for many of them, though tens of thousands were still in the dark and the cold over the weekend. And outside, thermometers finally climbed back up to the 60s and 70s on Sunday following a week of record cold temperatures and record amounts of snow. That led to record-breaking demand for electricity in the state, and that coincided with several major sources of power breaking down. Water pipes froze and burst in unheated homes. Water pipes froze and burst in hundreds of water systems. Problems were reported in more than 1,300 public systems last week. That affected four-fifths of all the counties in Texas and roughly half the state's population. Many people were put under boil water advisories. That means that even if their water was running, it might not have been safe to drink. So residents were advised either to use bottled water or to boil for one minute any tap water they planned to use for drinking, preparing food, brushing teeth, or even giving to pets. There have been some uplifting stories that have come out of Texas's hardships. Volunteers have been giving away hot meals and warm clothing to those in need. A furniture store owner opened his business to thousands of people who came in for warmth, and he allowed hundreds to sleep on his new mattresses, which he'll later sell at a discount. Many other Texans who've been hunkered down without somewhere else to go have been using snow to keep systems running in their homes. My water's not even bubbling. Nothing. The lights may be on, but across parts of Texas, the water isn't. Drinking water still needed. There's a panic mode that we didn't have enough drinking water. We would love showers, but we will we'll get that when we when we get our water turned back on. Texans waiting in long lines just to pick up cases of water, with nearly half of the state under boil water advisories. This is a community of people that are scared and upset and, and angry. Uh, we're eventually going to need some better answers. For right now, we're just trying to get water to our neighbors. But it's not just drinking water. Some residents can't even flush the toilet without melting snow. We relocated back to our house, five adults and two dogs. Um, and we started harvesting snow because we had also lost water at that point, um, harvesting snow for toilet water. President Joe Biden approving a major disaster declaration for Texas, freeing up more help from FEMA. You know, when disaster strikes, this is not just an issue for Texans. This is an issue for our entire country. Disasters don't strike everyone equally. When you already have so many families in the state and across the country that are on the brink, that can't even afford an emergency to begin with, when you have a disaster like this, it can just set people back for years. And as residents wait for the water and power to come back, some still forced to use their cars for warmth. Others, if they're lucky, find shelter in a hotel. The guests, frankly, it's been the equivalent of camping indoors. And moving forward, officials here are going to start looking at what exactly went wrong over this past week. And among what they're investigating is that many customers here in Texas reported getting extremely high power bills, even amid this catastrophe. So Texas officials are investigating that. And then on the waterfront, when could we see the water come back to Texas? Well, in some places, we're well on our way. In Houston, for example, they've reached that minimum threshold for water pressure. And here in Austin, officials are optimistic they can get water citywide by the end of the weekend. The first pictures have come in from NASA's latest mission to Mars. Last Thursday, the $2.7 billion Perseverance mission logged the ninth successful Mars landing by the United States. That's significant in part because roughly half the missions to the Red Planet have failed. The Perseverance rover has been going through a series of checks after arriving on Mars' surface. Sending back these images is one of the first things it's done. Perseverance landed in a crater where scientists think a lake might have been billions of years ago. So over the course of its two-year mission, Perseverance is set to travel 15 miles investigating the crater and its rocks. 10 Second Trivia Which of these countries has a national holiday that marks an event from 1789? United Kingdom, Morocco, France, or Argentina? This national holiday marks the anniversary of the storming of the Bastille prison. In France right now, schools are open, certain shops are open, churches and public libraries are open. 
You have to wear a mask everywhere you go, and almost everything shuts down by 6 o'clock p.m. In fact, the coronavirus-related curfew requires most Frenchmen and women to stay at home from dusk to dawn, and restaurants, movie theaters, gyms, and museums, they're all shut down. That includes the Louvre, one of the most famous museums on the planet. It usually costs about $18 to get inside, but the doors have been shut to visitors since October, and while the museum has lost millions in revenue during this time, it has gained an opportunity to catch up on quiet projects. The world's most visited museum awakens, but there are no visitors here. Escalators that once carried 40,000 pairs of feet a day whistle in the eerie emptiness brought on by COVID restrictions. Liberty and the Mona Lisa are having a break from their usual crowds of admirers. What were bustling halls now take mere minutes to walk through. Sculptures forced into hibernation in this Renaissance palace, but they're not completely alone. It's still living, even though it seems uh, really uh, asleep from the outside. Since October, when the Louvre closed, hundreds of artisans have been working five days a week to refurbish and rejuvenate with the stroke of a brush or the crank of a forklift. We have all the arts that are being uh, stored or just uh, uh, studied by the, the curators. We have uh, all the maintenance work that obviously can't stop, so it's uh, really rewarding. The stakes are pretty high, let's say. You don't want to, uh, to spoil what people have, uh, have been uh, building in centuries. Not since World War II has the Louvre been shuttered to the public for so long. Last year, it lost 90 million euros in revenue, but curators here say they have gained something more valuable, time. The rhythm of these expositions is so intense que c'est vrai que ça nous voilà ça, ça apporte du stress et c'est le, le plaisir aussi de pouvoir euh, avoir une réflexion calme et à long terme sur euh, ce qu'on veut montrer au, au Louvre parce que tout à coup un tableau paraît trop grand trop petit ou alors le cadre euh, ne convient pas avec ceux du voisinage il faut être à l'écoute de ce que les œuvres ont à dire et parfois euh, certaines ne, ne, ne s'aiment pas les unes les autres il faut les séparer these 19th century doors that once opened into the bedchamber of French kings are being restored to their former beauty. And you have these different layers that are meant to uh, recreate all in all the veins of the wood because you have, you know, uh, so many different colors uh, when you look that closely. On a des soies synthétiques qui sont très douces. Là, on a un blaireau, donc c'est des poils de blaireau. Uh, ici, on a un spalter, c'est de la soie de porc. Enfin, chaque uh, poil. <laughs> These doors will be finished in three weeks. When the Louvre will reopen is anyone's guess. The belief here is that art comes alive through the public's eye. Until then, the museum prepares for its resurrection. Saskia van Dorn, CNN, Paris. From trying to catch it, to enjoying fresh eggs, to frying it up, there are many fun things you can do with the chicken. But putting one on a sled? 10 out of 10. Hey look, here are some beautiful pictures of the snow. Who cares? Get to the chicken. That's more like it. This chicken's name is Donut. Excellent start. And when the kids on this farm in Tennessee go sledding, Donut comes along. Now before you say, Psh, they're only just holding her on the sled. Not so fast, hater. Donut sleds solo, and nothing about this exceptional scene suggests she sees sledding as a foul idea. The question is, did she get any coaching? She looks like she's having an orping ton of fun in the silky snow, and they didn't have to air and con her into it. She looks like she was hoping for snow all well summer, and if the visibility gets bad, she could always use her foghorn leghorn. I mean, Donut should count herself lucky that she has such a winging family. I'm Coral Azuz, and I get to make chicken puns for CNN 10. Shout out to Mandan High School in Mandan, North Dakota, and thank you for checking out our YouTube channel.